if you want the best overall muscle growth and you have all the time in the world to train, that somewhere between three and one rep in reserve on average for a program is a really good idea. As you get closer to failure, the amount of stimulus per set rises. So if you have a set where you stop at two reps shy of failure and another person has a set where they stop just at failure or someone has to drag the barbell off of them, the person who went to failure is gonna grow more muscle. That's a good thing, but it's by a small margin maybe just several percent more growth. The downside is training to failure generates a lot more fatigue, probably not a few percent more, maybe a few dozen percent more. If you're gonna use a program which mostly has you do three or two or one rep shy of failure, you'll get great stimulus and you'll be able to recover from lots of sets over the course of weeks and months, which means you'll get a great stimulus and a great hypertrophy result. If you insist on going to failure even beyond in your sets, you can get very good result, but you have to reduce the total volume of your training because the amount of fatigue you accumulate is going to be rapid. It's going to happen fast. So if you've ever heard of like HIT training, Mike Menser, high intensity training, HIT, Mike Menser and those folks were fans of going to failure and beyond with drop sets and crazy shit like that. They got really good results, but they don't do very many sets. A few sets per muscle per workout's all they do because they realized we can't recover from this. You can recover from more if you stay a little shy of failure. My suspicion is that if you want the best overall muscle growth and you have all the time in the world to train, that somewhere between three and one rep in reserve on average for a program is a really good idea. But you also want to test your shit every now and again. Difficult to say this has two reps in reserve if it's been months since you've actually gone to failure on that exercise. Because mm, mm. you can be fucking lying to yourself. Yeah, it's two RIR. Someone puts a gun to your head, literally maybe, and they're like, go to failure and you get six more reps. Well, shit. It turns out you weren't even in that best growth zone of three to one. You can always go two or three reps in reserve. As long as you do enough sets, you'll get very close to ideal hypertrophy outcomes. And you'll do very well in muscle growth if you just take everything to failure. You just have to really watch your fatigue management and not do too many sets because then you'll burn out. What about sets? Sets are influenced by a few things. One of the big ones is your proximity to failure. If you go close to failure all the time, you do on the lower end of this range, at least start there. If you do, oh, you know, two or three reps in reserve, you can be on the higher end of this range. A couple ways to think about sets. There are sets per week and there are sets per session. I like to think of per muscle group per session. Some people get overly obsessed about how many sets do I need to do per exercise? There is an answer to that question, but it's much more interesting to talk about per muscle group because you can train your chest with three exercises and do two sets each, or you can train it with two exercises and do three sets each the total amount of working sets is by far the biggest determinant of how much muscle you're gonna grow. So in a session, theoretically, you can do anywhere from one set for your muscle, just one set of curls and leave. And as a beginner, especially, you'll get some robust gains. Or as someone who's more advanced, if you train your biceps every single day, just one or two sets of curls ends up being a lot of weekly volume and plenty of stimulus, and that's a totally fine way to grow. On the other end, in the session, you can do as many as 12 to 15 sets for the biceps or for the chest. The downside there is on the higher ends of that spectrum, you are reaching into what's called junk volume. Yeah, you're training but your nervous system is so tired, it's not even recruiting as many of the muscle fibers as you want anymore. It's like it's taken the day off and you're just kind of robotically moving through. A couple of studies have been done, actually more than a few, and a lot of good meta-analytic data has been synthesized, probably some of the best of which is by a gentleman named James Krieger. Close to the best answer, on average, is something like five to eight working sets per muscle per session. So if you're training your biceps and you do three sets per session, totally cool. You just have to do more sessions per week. If you're doing something like nine sets for biceps, again, totally cool. You just have to train them less frequently so they can recover for a lot of nine sets of work. But if you're doing 15 working sets for just your biceps in one session, the literature would say that's not optimal. And the reasoning would be like your last five sets are just a gigantic fucking waste of your time. You're just not, you're cashed out. It's like frying an egg after it's already fried. It just gets more burned and nothing good happens to it. On the other hand, if you're doing just one or two sets for biceps per session, you had better be doing a lot of sessions over the week. And if you're only training once or twice for biceps, you say, look, man, your muscles could take more of a hit, which brings me to my next point. How do you determine if you're doing the right amount of volume for you? And I would actually keep this relatively simple. However many sessions you have per muscle, let's say you train your chest on Monday, you train chest again on Thursday. After Monday's workout, let's say you're doing three sets of chest. By Tuesday evening, you're like not sore, you're not tired, you're fucking ready to go, your strength is as high as it'll ever be. Someone could ask the theoretical question of why the fuck are you waiting Wednesday as a whole day to just go Thursday? You could have already hit it again. So if you're well beyond recovered, next Monday, you can do four sets or five sets for chest to get you close to just barely recovered for next Thursday. Thursday. If you're just barely covered, let's say Wednesday, you're still a little tight, a little sore, a little weak feeling, and Thursday morning, you're really good to go. 
perfect. If you do eight sets of chest on Monday, by the time Thursday rolls around, you're still sort of a touch and you're weaker than usual. You're not going to get as robust of a stimulus. And thus, you next time shouldn't do eight sets, maybe you should do six. So by adjusting the number of sets week over week for any given muscle to challenge yourself to recover close to just on time for the next time you hit it, not too far back, definitely not under recovered, you end up auto regulating yourself into probably close to your ideal volume for how much muscle you can gain.